SpaceX never slows down. Just after the amazing second orbital flight test of the Starship, Musk revealed some new details about the next version of the Raptor engine, as we talked about in our previous episode. Musk also announced that Starship version 1 is coming to an end, and teased the next crazy generation of Starship. On Friday, SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk shared a photo of the Starships at Starbase and said, four more Starships, the last of V1. SpaceX first introduced the V1.0 prototype of the Starship in 2020. Before that, they had built several Starship prototypes, but the V1 prototype was the first one designed for an orbital test flight. In this photo, we can see 28, 29, 30, and 31. This means that 32 and 33 might be cancelled, since they are based on the same design. For the future prototypes, version 2 of the ship holds more propellant, reduces dry mass, and improves reliability, Musk tweeted. We can expect that the new ships will have 9 engines instead of 6 and carry about 1,800 tons of propellant instead of 1,200. They will also be longer, reaching 58 meters. This will make it easier for the booster to return to the launch site and increase the delta V of Starship when refueled in orbit. But how will they reduce the dry mass if they make the ships bigger? Well, one possibility is that they will use thinner steel, but that seems unlikely, as thinner steel would also need more internal supports, which would still add more weight. In reality, SN7.2 was tested with 3mm steel instead of 4mm back in January of 2021, so maybe they're thinking about switching back to that. Also, SpaceX will probably upgrade Starship to have 9 engines, 6 Raptor vacuums, and 3 sea levels. More thrust means less gravity losses during ascent, which means more payload capacity. Of course, dry mass isn't just the hull. It also includes the engines, but keep in mind that the new Raptors they're working on don't need extra shielding inside the back section, so they might cut down on the dry mass a bit depending on how heavy the new Raptors are. They could also fit more propellant by shrinking the payload area and or using a flatter E-domes. Payload area and or using the flatter E-domes. Musk didn't say how much more propellant the newer ships will have, it might not even be that much more. With all the lessons learned from these tests, the next version of Starship and Booster will make this one look like a toy rocket, and I wonder what the next generation after that will be like. But before we can even start thinking about that, the next flights of the current Starship version are still worth looking forward to. Musk's plan is Starship Fly 3 hardware should be ready to fly in 3 to 4 weeks. As we can see, SpaceX already has 3 ships in final production, meaning any one of those could be the next flight-ready Starship. For boosters, there are a few of those as well that could become flight-ready. Super Heavy Booster 11 just returned from the old Massey's Gun Range, a site SpaceX purchased last year and turned into a rocket testing facility. The timeline, which may be three to four weeks, would put us in mid-December, or Christmas. From a SpaceX point of view, this is a very reasonable time frame, even in Elon's terms, to get flight hardware ready. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that SpaceX can fly by then. However, that doesn't necessarily mean SpaceX can be flying by then. SpaceX will now first have to complete its mishap investigation and report its findings to the FAA with corrective actions to ensure a similar failure won't happen again. Then, the FAA will have to improve its actions and complete its own safety review to make sure the public won't be at risk for another flight. Luckily, unlike April's launch, there is isn't a fear of having any issues getting a second launch approval from the FAA. There's a precedent now that the FAA will give SpaceX another launch on its license and eventually close out investigations. However, the lawsuit with the FAA from environmental activists is always a concern. But that lawsuit is seemingly not going anywhere anytime soon, and there was no challenge to try to stop Flight 2, so an attempt to stop Flight 3 is unlikely. So 
the biggest unknown at this moment is how long will the mishap investigation take? Meanwhile, Starship's arch rival, Blue Origin's new Glenn, is expected to launch in August of 2024. Indeed, NASA expects that a Mars small sat mission will be on the first launch of Blue Origin's new Glenn launch vehicle within a year, although with some risk about whether the rocket will be ready in time. NASA selected Blue Origin back in February to launch the Escape and Plasma Acceleration and Dynamics Explorers, or Escapade, mission, a pair of small sets that will study the interaction of the solar wind with the magnetosphere of Mars. The contract value was not initially announced, but later was disclosed in a federal procurement database at 20 million US dollars. At a November 20th meeting of the NASA Advisory Council's Human Exploration and Operations Committee, Bradley Smith, director of NASA's launch services office said he was incredibly excited about the escapade mission which he said was scheduled for about one year his charts though and past presentations listed an august 2024 launch for escapade it's an incredibly ambitious first launch for new glenn and we really appreciate the partnership he said later in the committee meeting he confirmed that nasa expected escapade to be on the inaugural new glenn launch we will very likely be the very first launch of new glenn he said. That is acceptable, Smith said, since Escapade is what NASA characterizes as a Class D mission with a higher tolerance for risk. We're willing to take a little bit of risk with a price tag and a mission assurance model that reflects that risk. Besides the inherent technical risks in the first launch of a new rocket, there are also schedule risks. New Glenn development is years behind the original schedule Blue Origin put forward. The company has not provided recent updates about progress towards a first launch of the rocket, although Jarrett Jones, senior vice president for New Glenn at Blue Origin, said at World Satellite Business Week in September that the first flight vehicle would arrive at a Florida integration facility by the end of the year, with the company planning multiple launches of New Glenn in 2024. There's certainly some schedule risk associated with New Glenn getting to the pad, Smith said, noting he has seen Blue Origin's schedule for the vehicle but did not disclose details about it. He declined to put a percentage out there on the odds the launch will happen on schedule. Finally, another potential broomstick, the Ariane 6, is also on the line. The European Space Agency, or ESA as they'd like to be called, conducted a long-duration firing of an Ariane 6 prototype on November 23rd, one of the final tests before the agency is ready to set a date for the rocket's inaugural launch. The Vulcan 2.1 engine in the core stage of the Ariane Ariane 6 test model ignited at about 3.44 p.m. Eastern on the launch pad at Kourou, French Guiana. The start of the test was delayed by nearly 45 minutes when the countdown was stopped at 2 minutes and 42 seconds because of what ESA called a small anomaly in the transient threshold pressure. I wonder what that means. The test firing was scheduled to last 470 seconds, mimicking a full burn of the core stage on an actual launch. Controllers announced a shutdown at the expected time, although the performance of the engine appeared to change in the final minute of the burn. ESA said Ariane 6 passed the test in a statement shortly afterward, describing it as a 7-minute full firing of the engine rather than the nearly 8 minutes advertised beforehand. Joseph Oshbacher, Director General of ESA, shared, This milestone rehearsal comes after years of designing, planning, preparing, building, and hard work from some of the finest space engineers in Europe. We are back on track towards re-securing Europe's autonomous access to space. There is one more hot fire test of the Ariane 6 upper stage examining its performance in degraded conditions. That test at a facility in Germany is scheduled for December. Martin Sion, chief executive of Ariane Group, said in a company statement there are a few additional tests of the rocket to demonstrate fault tolerance as well as ship the flight hardware for the first launch to Kourou and perform a launch system qualification review. But, he said, Ariane 6 now has a core stage and an upper stage which have undergone all testing necessary to be ready for the inaugural flight. Well folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you'd like to support our channel even further, you can hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up today and become a patron to gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, right? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your
your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.